by the way, man, Jeff McCarl was an artist. Yeah. An artist. He wrote this on the back of my chart. Oh, man. It's incredible. Yeah. Man, he's it, it's such a such an amazing drums uh, part on that song, man. It's 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 oh, it's, it's better than better than even better than Rosanna. How he plays the halftime shuffle on that song, man. It's incredible. It's so smooth. It was either myself or Greg Matheson that named that groove. We called it a funk a shuffle. Yeah, man. Funk a shuffle. As a matter of fact. It says it right here on the part. <laughs> that says it's enough. You're going to find the shuffle. <laughs> All right. And there's some drum drum things I wrote for him to catch. This is uh, this tune was definitely written out. I don't think he played this one fill I wrote out, but it didn't matter. Jeff was great, man. And he could read because of his dad, so that helped. Um, no, and how was his uh, his uh, his feel on a click? It's so it, for me, yeah, I, I'm, yeah. my biggest wish is to hear Steve Gett playing on a on a click. You have now that that forty uh, twenty four track things that you hear tracks separately, but there is no track of you or something that you hear how the guys play on the click. That's that's my big wish to hear how they play on a click. Jeff was not good with a click. Some guys are, some guys are, are not. Most guys are, aren't. No, okay, I forgot to mention John Robinson. He's another guy with a, that's great with a click, JR. He's a great drummer. Yeah. Great drummer. So you got Vinny, who's like, Dean Parks told me he's the best of the best with a click now. I mean, it really cancels out. You don't even hear it. So, um, but back in the day, Mike Baird was very good. <clears throat> I can't remember if I ever used a click with with Gad, but he would be good. He would be good. His time's so even, it would be good. Yeah. Um, who else was good? I don't think Keltner would been good with a click. Keltner floats, but who knows? Maybe he is. Um, yeah, man. Playing with a click, first of all, here's something else I should say. The only guy that should be listening to the click on a tracking date is the drummer. Yeah. The only time, the okay, so he should have a separate mix. The other guy should only hear the click during the count off or in between a, a spot where the drums are out. So there should be two separate click feeds and one designed for the, the band that would only be hearing it when the when there's no drums. But other than that, it should just be the drummer listening to the click. Because when we listen to the click and the drums, who do you go with? The click or the drummer? Yeah. You know? Sometimes the drummer will be early. Sometimes he'll be late, typically early. So who am I playing with? I've got to tune the click out and go with the drummer. And it's just an extra thought process I don't want. So, you know, the yeah. click, to me, that's the way I would do it. If I ever record tracks again and it's with a click, only the drummer's going to hear it and the band will only hear it when there's in sections with no drums. So... so so with the Jeff Ocaro song, the click is more a reference. It's not so important that he because he has such an incredible feel. I think. Yeah, he he was not good with the click. It was it wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth it. I just let him. I'd rather he just play. I don't care if a song speeds up a little. Yeah. You know, I don't care if the chorus speeds up a little. And I don't care if the verse lays back a little bit. As long as it's not radical and feels good. And as long as everybody's coming in on one when they're supposed to, you know. So we knew Jeff's groove so well that on record dates, I knew where one was coming, you know, um, every all the time because I, I knew his feel. You get used to the feel and you get used to their groove on the hat for different different styles of music. When I walk in, I see Ed Green's playing drums. I know how the 16th tilt's going to be. Wow. He slightly tilts the 16th when it's a 16th, supposed to be kind of 16th straight. He still slightly tilts it. And since I'm playing rhythm guitar, I go with his tilt. Yeah. So I 
when I walk in the studio and I see who's playing drums, I go, okay, if it's James Gadson, I know where his tilt is. Uh, Harvey Mason, I know where his tilt is. So for every different drummer, as soon as I look at him, I go, okay, I know where this is going to be. But and that's where, from where, where's the tilt of Mr. James Gadson? He would, he nice. It was a good tilt, a good R&B funk tilt. Nice, sweet. Yeah. It, it, an underrated cat, man. Man, he, it's one of my favorites. Uh, oh, it's Steve okay. Gatton, then it's uh, James Gatson. Steve Gatson's just in, uh, just grooves, man. Yeah. He had this. He'd get this shit-eating grin smile on his face when it was feeling real good. And I, I told him about two months ago. I emailed him, and I said, James, when you got that grin on your face, man, I knew we were all in the pocket you wanted us to be in. Yeah. Just get that look, man. Great player, great player. Ed Green too, man. Yeah, and that's that is such an unknown cat, but he plays on. Nobody knows Ed Green almost, and that I I want to interview him also because for me, always when I hear a record and I say, well, "Who's the drummer?" I Ed Green, man, you know, and he's not such a well known guy. Uh, he is around here. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but he he did so much amazing stuff. People really have to check him out. Ed Green, man, he has a backbeat from heaven. I think. Barry White records, all of them. That's yeah. the f a lot of Motown records. Yeah, uh, let's and see. also the the Fagan things, the the, oh, the Aja yeah. things. We gotta love this. He only played on one tune, right? I've got the news, right? Yeah. I think that was the only tune he played on in yeah. Asia, right? One, yeah, and, and the Nightfly he plays on, but that's the solo record of Donald Fagan. Well, that's the that's my favorite, to tell you the truth. Yeah. <laughs> What song did he play on Nightfly? I don't know exactly, but he, I know for sure it's James Getson, Jeff Porcaro, and Ed Green on the Nightfly. Okay. The tune that I love the way uh, Ed played is, is I've Got the News, because yeah. He always played Bach, Bach at him, or Bach at him. That was a standard fill. He'd never get in the way, man. When you're on a record date, you play what's needed, you know? And that was a common fill. Uh, David Page <laughs> counted him up one time, and there was like 55 variations of that. But that's what made that record so special, you know? The Bogadum, Bach Bogadum, you know, and dig his swing groove on that. That's a he's he's that's a that's a, a, a definitely a major tilt. I mean, it's all it you know, it's almost a triplet thing. Yeah, it is close to it. It's a kind yeah. of 